Good afternoon, everyone. Another week in Financial Planning Week. And not only is it Financial Planning Week, uh, but today is World Financial Planning Day that is organized and celebrated by the Financial Planning Standards Board, um, the global body uh, for financial planning. Um, and today on this uh, session, we have covered off on the get knowledge part. So we spoke about what the FBI My Money One Two Three program is all about. And we have also then taken you through the, the workshop yesterday. So if you haven't uh, seen those sessions, you are welcome to go onto YouTube or Facebook. Um, they have been recorded and they are sitting there with you. Today, we are gonna be talking about the next step of the uh, financial education process, which is getting a guide. And what I'm gonna take you through today is some processes and questions and thoughts that you can have while you are choosing a financial professional to work with. So as always, um, our website is live, letsplan.co.za. Um, you're welcome to go on there and you can get some more information or go on to fpi.co.za. Um, as well as uh, follow us on YouTube for all the events that we have put out, as well as on our LinkedIn and other social media. If you do want to book a workshop, uh, you can go and email uh, mymoney123 at fpi.co.za and Rihanna, who we met on Monday, will come back to you with regards to booking workshop. So without further ado, let's talk about choosing a financial professional to work with. And it might surprise you, but the first step in choosing a financial professional is not about the professional, but it is more about you. And that is do some research to get familiar with financial planning terms and strategies, because while a good financial planner is going to include the education as part of what they do and uh, explain all of that to you, with you having an understanding of the basics will allow you to engage and be more fully um, an equal partner in the relationship. So that is why we covered off on the get knowledge part beforehand. So again, if you visit our website, letsplan.co.za, a lot more information that what we've already shared will be available, as well as all the tips that our members are actually putting through during Financial Planning Week. Then once you are prepared and you understand these terminologies, it is also about thinking about what your financial and personal goals are. Because financial planning is really the process of putting the right strategies in place to meet your life goals. So without understanding what your goals are, of at least having some time to think about what is important for you both today and tomorrow, so you can live your today and plan your tomorrow, it's very important for your discussion with your financial planner. So again, a, a good financial planner will take you through a conversation to help you formulate your goals, but it's really important for you to sit back and think about you know, what goals do you have and what is important to you in your life so that you and your planner can discuss how to make the money work in order to meet your goals and dreams. Then asking for referrals. So you don't need to go into this blindly. Um, you can speak to friends, you can speak to family and say, look, I'm thinking of engaging with a, a financial planner. Has anyone had experience with working with a financial planner? And if so, have they got anyone who they can recommend? Now, referrals don't have to have only come from friends and families. When you are engaging with your financial planner, ask them if they have any client testimonials or even clients they can refer you to so you can get some information directly from clients who the financial planner has already worked with. Then verifying their credentials. So as FPI or the Financial Planning Institute of Southern Africa is the only SACWA recognized professional body for financial planners and financial advisors in South Africa. So before dealing with a financial planner, you can go onto our website, fpi.co.za, and there is a search and a verification tool so you can actually verify that a member is in good standing and holds one of the professional designations, which we'll talk a little bit later about. It is also important to note that for a financial planner or financial advisor to provide advice in South Africa, they must be licensed by the Financial Sector Conduct Authority, particularly when they are going to be talking to you about financial products, such as insurance, savings and investments, even bank accounts. You can find out whether your advisor is in fact authorized and qualified 
by visiting www.fca.co.za or calling them on their toll-free line. Then it doesn't mean that you must jump in and find the first planner. Remember, we are financial planning is a long-term relationship that is about living your today and planning for your tomorrow. And when we talk about tomorrow, we're not talking about uh, Thursday. We're talking about a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, or even when you turn 65, when you turn 80. So financial planning is, in fact, a long-term relationship. So interview two or three planners, um, understand what their qualifications are, what their experience is, what is their approach to clients, how do they go about making sure that you are someone they can work with and that they're a good fit in terms of their expertise, areas of speciality, and in fact, very importantly, do you gel with your financial planner? Is it somebody that you've got a personality fit with that um, you can have the discussions that you need to have with. The next one is look for competence and ethics. Okay, so there are various designations and terms that are used in the financial services industry, and some of them quite be confusing. What you can do, however, if you look for an FBI professional member who has either got the certified financial planner or CFP professional designation, who holds the FSA or financial services advisor designation, and lastly, the RFP or registered financial practitioner de uh, designation, you know that they represent the high standards of experience, competence, and knowledge, and have gone through a rigorous process by the Financial Planning Institute to ensure that they meet the standards that we set. What is very important too is all professional members voluntarily sign onto a code of ethics that at the heart of it has you, the client, in the front and center. So the Code of Ethics says that they will take your interests and place them above your own, as well as act with integrity, professionalism, honesty, and uh, keep the relationship that you have confidential in the things that we discuss. Ideally, what financial planning about is all about trust. So you've got to be comfortable in discussing personal issues with the particular financial planner. In order for you to get the most out of your financial planning relationship, honesty, trust, and communication on both sides is crucial to the success of it. If you're not willing to speak to your planner about all your goals, all your dreams, and your entire financial situation, and can't feel that you have the trust and the, the freedom to do so, then it is not the right relationship for you. Because if you leave anything out, the advice that you get is going to be short and not because of anything that the financial planner has done, but merely that they don't have a full picture and all the information to give you the right advice. Now that we've gone through some things in terms of preparing for your first meeting with your financial planner, and you've taken the decision to say, I'm ready to deal with a financial planner now, what are the first things and what can you expect? Well, as you prefer for your uh, as you prepare for your first meeting, it's likely that you might have some more questions that you can ask the financial planner directly. And you're not alone in that. Okay, clients are financial planners, particularly if you're doing it for the first time or have had a bad experience in the past and are not too sure what to expect. You don't know what to expect, what to divulge, or what to bring to your first official meeting with the financial planner you've chosen to engage with. But don't worry, all financial planners have a unique approach and they might require different things from you, but all FBI professional members follow a general framework known as the financial planning practice standards. Now in the first meeting, which is normally a discovery meeting, it is really there that they will set the basis of the ongoing relationship with you. It is in that meeting that they will ask you some questions and explain to you how the process will work, what they actually do, and whether the relationship is right for both you and the financial planner. It is after that meeting that they will also be able to explain to you what the process is going forward and what documents and things that you will need. So this is just a, a, a demonstration of the financial planning process and what you can expect when you go through financial planning with a financial planner.
The first step, as we discussed, is really establishing the relationship, which is setting the boundaries and the ground rules in terms of how it is going to work. What services do you require from the financial planner? What services do you not require from the financial planner? The second step in the process is really gathering information and getting to understand you better. And when I say getting to understand you better, it is not only getting to understand your finances better, it is really getting to understand you better. So the financial planner will ask you both quantitative, so information about your finances, and qualitative information, information about you, your family relationships, um, your goals, your dreams, what is important to you about money. The planner then will analyze that information that they've gathered and form a a st uh, understanding in a picture about your financial situation, about where you are. They will then develop a plan for you. And again, I probably shouldn't say develop a plan for you because what they'll do is develop a plan with you. And that is how financial planning has really changed over the last few years. With technology, with um, more access to information, we are seeing that the development of the plan is becoming more of a collaboration as opposed to the planner sitting in the dark corner and coming up with a plan which they then present. So it is something that you work with together to make sure that the plan is a right fit for you. And then a plan is not a plan if you don't do something with it. So the next step is to implement the solutions that you and the planner have jointly agreed upon and make sure that you can actually start on the journey towards your goals and dreams. And then life happens. Okay, The plan that you draft today is not going to be um, the same tomorrow. It's not going to be the same three years from now. And the reason for that is the environment changes, the economy changes, what we're working in changes, but your personal situations will also change. Maybe along the way you graduate from university and you get a new job, or you change jobs, or you've got a married, you have a new child. Um, your goals, your dreams change. So it is very important to constantly check in and review your plan. Even if nothing's changed, okay, the assumptions that you use today in putting the plan together might change. So it's very important on a regular basis that again will be agreed between you and the planner to go and ensure that your plan is reviewed and adjusted to make sure you are in line and in line with your goals. So again, thank you very much for uh, listening to me about the thought process of choosing a financial planner. The next two sessions that we are going to cover off on Thursday and Friday will be more about the walking the journey. So it will be about discussing what elements you can expect in a financial plan, as well as uh, a session on setting your goals uh, with our FPI professional members. So thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And again, uh, we'll see you on Thursday and Friday to end Financial Planning Week. And remember, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn to look for more tips that our members have put together for you to enjoy this Financial Planning Week. And again, join me in celebrating in World Financial Planning Day on a global scale. And let's all live today, but ensure that we are planning for our tomorrows. Thank you very much.